All right, uh, thank you everybody. Um, yeah, my name is Peter Lekic, I'm with New Pacific. I recently joined, so bear with me a little bit, but I think I have the handle on the story to some extent. Andrew Williams is our CEO, and he was unable to be here for this conference, but uh, I just wanna be clear that I'm not the, not the CEO. Um, here we have our, our cautionary note, uh, advised that we'll be making forward-looking statements, so please take that under advisement, and you know, feel free to read this on your own time. Um, New Pacific. So New Pacific is a company focused on Bolivia. We have two projects that we're actively developing right now, Silver Sand and Carangas. And we also have a, an earlier stage uh, project called Silver Strike that we've put on pause right now as we focus on development. Silver Sand um, is the backbone of a company. It's a, a high grade open pit silver mine containing measured and indicated resources of over 50 million tons, grading 116 grams per ton silver, and that equates to 200 million ounces of silver in the deposit. We put out a PEA in 2003 that showed very strong economics, including a 39% after-tax uh, internal rate of return and an NPV5 of over $700 million. Karangas is our, our newer discovery. It's a high tonnage open pit polymetallic deposit containing gold, lead, silver, and zinc. Um, we're pretty excited about this project and we don't think we're getting a lot of value for it currently on our share price. Um, we put out an initial resource uh, last year in 2023 and we had over 500 million ounces of silver equivalent and over 110 million ounces of silver equivalent in the inferred. Uh, the 500, I should say, was an indicated. Um, for 2024, we're, as I said before, focused, uh, the focus of the company is on development, is on doing two technical reports. At Silver Sand, we're looking to complete a PFS. Um, we're saying in the middle of this year, hopefully around May to June, we'll have the results out with the report to follow. Following that, we'll have a PEA at Karangas, which will put the initial sort of economics on that project. Um, and as I said, that will be again mid year, maybe into July with the results for that project. At, at Silver Sand, also there's a, a um, effort to continue the, the advance the permitting process um, as we continue to move that project forward. As you can imagine, uh, a question we get a lot is, is why Bolivia? Um, and we actually think there's a lot of advantages to Bolivia to go along with some of the challenges. Um, it's a country that's blessed with uh, exceptional geology, um, an incredible silver endowment in the country, including you know, obviously the famous Cerro Rico deposit that had over three billion ounces of silver and has been mined operating continuously for you know, since 1500. Um, there's a deep mining culture in Bolivia. Um, people understand mining. Mining makes up 20% of the exports of the country. Um, and silver was the, it's the sixth largest silver producer in the world uh, in 2022. Uh, another advantage to the, the country is that it's, it's underexplored. Um, and I think this is best demonstrated by the fact in the last several years, we were able to make two significant discoveries ourselves as a relatively small company. Um, this is a nice summary, I think, of Silver Sand and what we've done over the past several years here. Um, we acquired the, the project and the land in 2016 and began an extensive drill program in 2017. From 17 to 22, we drilled well over 100,000 meters of, of drilling um, and we were able to put the first resource on the project in 2020, followed by an updated resource in 22, and finally the PEA in 2023. Um, you can see our property outline here. Do I have a laser? You can see it here. Um, and then here. This is 100% owned by New Pacific and we don't have any encumbrances on this. So no, no streams, no royalties. I, I like this because I'm not a geologist, I'm just a silly engineer. Um, so I like to look at cross sections and I think it gives a good sense of the deposit. You can see here what's exciting is it goes to surface so we don't have to dig. Um, the other thing that's exciting about this is all along surface is where the high grade is. So this green, where we see green, is impermeable mudstone, which is relatively easy to, to get through, but it also has the benefit as, of the fluids come up. They come here and they hit the impermeable zone and they kind of pool, and that's why you see the high grade at surface. So what this translates to is, here's our resource. Um, we'll just move on that one. Oh, sorry, we've got some order issues here. What that translates to is, in the first few years, we have this very, very nice 16 million ounces a year. We're processing 135 grams a ton in the, in the first couple of years, and that, that leads to, you know, uh, obviously very good economics. Um, I think. Uh, oops, sorry. 
we just had some over here. Here's the capital costs. So um, capital costs of 308 million with an additional 20 million of, of sustaining capex over the life of mine. Um, obviously with the PFS, we're gonna sharpen our pencils a bit on these numbers and, and we update that. Important to note, this includes contract mining and we've also looked at uh, equipment from Chinese vendors as well as North American vendors where it makes sense. So we feel, feel pretty, pretty confident in this, this number for a PEA and we will be improving that with the PFS. I think, Ah, there we go. Uh, the results. So we've looked at the the grade. We've looked at the production profile, looked at the capital costs. So it should be no surprise that this is a project with pretty robust economics. Um, as I said, a, a 39% after tax IRR, an NPV5 of $726 million, uh, which leads to an NPV to CapEx ratio of 2.3 times, which is, which is fantastic. Um, also worth noting the payback is sub two years. Um, I, I'd also like to point out that the all in sustaining cost is $10 right here. That's a um, number without the benefit of co-products. We only produce silver at this mine and that also incorporates the upfront capital. So the, the operating costs for this, this mine are very low. Uh, we're just gonna skip over this one to Karangas. So Karangas, um, as you can see here, we have a very large land package. It's, it's very accessible with a 197 kilometer, 200 kilometers on a paved highway from the nearest sort of population center with a 35 kilometer gravel road to site, um, 270 kilometers to the port on a paved highway. So also like to point out here that all the drilling has focused on this area here in this land package called Granville One. So all this, we have geophysics across the whole property. We've done some, some geology, some geochem, some surface work, but all the drilling has focused uh, right here where we made our discovery. Um, I think this is a good overview of the geology at Karangas. Uh, it's an example, I'm gonna use geological words now, of metal zonation. It's controlled by the temperature and the pressure. You can see in the lower zone where the temperature and pressure is highest, we have gold rich area in the middle, we have our polymetallic area where the lead and zinc is dominant and at the top where the pressure is low and the, the temperature is low, that's where the silver has accumulated. So we have sort of a silver layer, a polymetallic layer and a gold layer is how we're characterizing this. Again, this is a large resource, uh, over 200 million tons of, of indicated uh, with 560 million ounces of, of silver equivalent. Again, in the indicated, a further 100 million ounces of, of silver equivalent in the inferred. Um, I like this, this cross section here as well. I think you get a good section, a sense of the size of the deposit. Again, with the three layers, silver at the top, polymetallic in the middle and gold at the bottom. Um, as we look at this and we're looking at thinking about a PEA, you know, like many developers, what we're focused on is how can we make a project that, that makes economic sense and with a low upfront capex. Our, our plan is to see if we can do uh, some sort of starter pits of you know, reasonable grades and modest tonnage that will you know, support the infrastructure at site. Um, so we're working towards that as we, as we do our PEA. Now, um, here's the, the bit of the upside and exploration. As I said before, we are focused right now on, on doing the technical work, but we would like to get back to drilling once we get this done. Um, across the property, you can see we've identified several geophysical anomalies. There's little hot red spots here. We have done work, um, some work identifying targets there with, with some of the, the geochem and some of the surface work that has been done, some of the sampling. Um, we continue to do more desktop work to identify targets, and I think there's real potential here to, to get the drill spinning and have some interesting results. We only have drilled this one area is the first area we went into and we were uh, successful making a discovery on, on this spot. We'll skip over the, um, the cap structure. Uh, I think it's important to note here that we have two uh, strategic investors, including Silver Corp with 27.4% of the holdings and Pan American with 11.6. So that, that really underpins uh, the balance sheet and you know allows us to to access capital in case we need it. It also allows us to access, frankly, the expertise of both companies, which is very helpful. We're pretty well covered. Here's our list of analysts. Uh, Red Cloud is picking up coverage. We're just encouraging them to move. But uh, uh, you say in a month or so, what do you think? <laughs> Two months? It's coming. Um, 
And then the management team. As I mentioned, Andrew Williams is our CEO. He was a PM at Sun Valley for many years and has been in the seat for, for about a year. Alex Zhang, who's our head of exploration, who led the discoveries at both Silver Sands and Karangas. Uh, Jalen, who's our CFO, who's been with the group for, for many years. Uh, Dustin, who's a relatively recent addition, a uh, very experienced operator in South and Central America, and we're very lucky to have him as we move the project uh, from exploration into development. And then, of course, Carolina, who's our VP of Corporate Affairs, a uh, very experienced person, Bolivian, and um, very involved with the, the Bolivian community in Canada and in, and in Bolivia. Uh, our board of directors, uh, chaired by Dixon Hall, including Andrew, Paul Simpson, uh, Miles Gao. Martin, who's the rep from uh, Pan American, who's also very helpful in bringing some of their technical expertise. Uh, Maria Tang, and then uh, so Peter McGaw, who people may know from Egg Silver. So that's New Pacific. Uh, turn over to questions. Mm -hmm.